are pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another reaction video because I'm oh so important that I have to react to everything. But I am quite excited about reacting to this. I haven't done much preparation, but my buddy and uh, former booktuber Alex Kerner, I'll put a link to his defunct channel. He's been a guest on my Bite Size Book Chats a couple times, getting to know him a little bit. He is on the review, he is on the board of something, board of directors of the Hamilton Review of Books, that's Hamilton, Ontario. And has started up a podcast. I'll put a link to the debut episode, which just went up the other day. And he had a chat in that debut episode with the editor-in-chief of the Hamilton Review Books, Dana Hansen. And I had already bookmarked an article that I think Dana Hansen herself compiled. What we're reading, Editor's Picks Fall 2021. I'm interested in Canadian literature when it's good. And this is stuff that's off the beaten track. I have done some reaction videos to some CBC articles that are maybe more mainstream books. And most of the things here I hadn't heard of. So I'm going to tell you about the ones that are of interest to me. And, you know, my tastes are very strange. So you should go and look at the article itself because you'll probably find stuff there that I wasn't interested in that you might be. These editor's picks are not limited to Hamilton, Ontario, Canada writers, by the way. Let's make that absolutely clear. First of all, there is a graphic novel. I'm not a big reader of graphic novels, but this one looks interesting. Living with Viola by Rosina Fung. Coming out from Anik Press this month, October 2021. Exploration of mental health, cultural differences, and the trials of middle school. The author draws on her own early experiences with anxiety and the pressures of growing up as the child of Chinese immigrant parents. Rosina Fung lives in Toronto, and uh, I just saw on her website, her name is pronounced Rosanna. So, I didn't see that until right now. She is an illustrator and comic artist. Next is one I'm very excited about. I want to start collecting this woman's art. Her name is Christy Belcourt. And there's a book of her art coming out this month, October 2021. Self-titled, Christy Belcourt, and it's by Sherry Farrell Reset, Nadia Kurd, and Dylan Miner. And it, it looks like kind of a coffee table book, but I'm not sure. Here's the cover image. It looks like it could be a coffee table book. And I, I think it's going to be full of her art. Now, there's the cover, so that you can see she's fabulous. She's a Métis visual artist. Her ancestry goes back to the historic Métis community of Manitou Sakigan, or Lac Saint Anne in Alberta. And I absolutely love her art. And it's available for sale. So I'm going to start saving my pennies so I can own some someday. This book is devoted to her life and work. So there's a, a text in both English and Anishinaabe Mowin, which is the language, I think, also known as Ojibwe. I'm still learning. Please correct any mistakes I make. And uh, essays by the people mentioned as authoring the book. Those are the people who have contributed essays. Her art is fantastic. I hate the fact that I have been so consumed with COVID and stuff going on in my own life that while it's heartbreaking what's happened to Hong Kong, I really haven't been able to devote enough attention to it. There's not like nothing I could do about it. There's nothing anybody can do about China. I mean, Taiwan's, you know, days are numbered and probably Japan's and Canada's. I mean, China's going to take over the world. What, what, what are we people, or we're going to have a nuclear war. I don't know what. Don't mean to be a pessimist, but anyway, I am heartbroken. I know Hong Kongese people. Um, I just, I hate China. Not Chinese people. I love most, I love any Chinese, I love Chinese people. But I hate China, the government. Um, and they're here to stay, and I don't know what's going to be done about them unless their people rise up. Um, and, uh, yeah, Jesus. Anyway, I digress, but here is a book of... Verse, photographs, dramatic monologues, and historical testimony about the Hong Kong protests and the aftermath. Post scripts from a city burning by Sam Chuk came out last month, September, by Palimpsest Press. I would like to check into it because, like I say, I just haven't made space in my life to process it. Do I? Do I? A white Canadian guy in Tokyo need to process it? I don't know, but I just feel like it's one of those calamities that I haven't 
for been focused on. This book sounds very interesting. Sam Chuk is a Hong Kong-born Canadian poet and author. He's had books published. I believe they might both be works of poetry. Love Figures, 2011. Deus a Machina, 2017. Lives in Toronto. Now, reading the blurb about this in the article, it sounds like it might be a queer coming-of-age novel, but whether it is or it isn't, I'm interested. It starts um, in high school days, but carries into this protag- female protagonist's university MFA days. It's called The Most Precious Substance on Earth by Shashi Bat. It came out in August of this year. Coming-of-age novel, and it's by an Indo-Canadian writer who I've never heard of. Bright, hilarious, sensitive 14-year-old protagonist, Nina. Her best friend begins to pull away, and... She, her crush on her English teacher intensifies. I don't know about genders, about any of this, so I don't know what, what it is, and uh, you know, that's why I would want to read the book. Her mother's trying to hook her up with, not hook her up, set her up with local Halifax Indian boys. So I'm guessing that that's where the story is set in Halifax, and the story, like I say, it continues through into her MFA program. Darkly funny, deeply moving. That sounds interesting. I would like to check into that. Shashi Bat's webpage is entitled Shashi Bat Fiction Writer. This is her second novel, The Most Precious Substance on Earth. Uh, she has a collection of short stories and a debut novel, The Family Took Shape, from 2013. Uh, she teaches creative writing at Douglas College. I don't know where that is. I think it's in British Columbia. I was really glad to see this one. The uh, writer is an antiquarian bookseller. Very Polish name, Marius Kozajowski. I think that's how you pronounce it. This new one, which is coming out next month, November 2021, a factotum in the book trade. I read about a quarter of one of his earlier books. I can't remember. I'm going to put the cover gif up here of the one that I read. I read it on Scribd in my early days as a member of Scribd. And I can't remember why, but I didn't finish it. I was really enjoying it. I re- he's, a, like I say, an antiquarian bookseller in London, and he writes really well about that trade. I remember that Annie Lennox came in and either bought a book or sold him a book or something. And, yeah, he's just interesting writer. So he has a new one coming out. This book is described as an elegy for a floating world on the cusp of disappearance. That's an elegant phrase. I am getting more and more into nature writing, thanks to Doris and Heidi of the Book Naturalist Club, and I think Lindy has been quite an influence on me. I think I've heard of this guy, Tim Bowling. Don't remember what I've heard, but he has a new collection of essays coming out in December. The Call of the Red-Winged Blackbird. Essays on the Common and Extraordinary. These essays are about love, money, solitude, poetry, the place of art, but they all seem to be grounded in things like the red-winged blackbird, the moon, the trees, the salmon, and so on. Tim Bowling is a Canadian novelist and poet, grew up in British Columbia, now lives in Edmonton. I thought he was an Edmonton writer. I think Lindy gave me a book by him that's out of print. I think so. Next is a novella. It's climate fiction, or post-climate fiction. I'm not sure. This one sounds more dystopian. Set in Alberta. The Annual Migration of Clouds by Primi Mohammed came out last month from ECW Press. It's a novella. A woman infected with a mysterious parasite must choose what she's going to do. That's enough details. Uh, Oh, it's also described as a post-apocalyptic hope punk novella. What the hell? I'm too old for this. What is hope punk? I've heard of steampunk, which... Steampunk. Steampunk, which I think is ridiculous. But let's see. What is hope punk? It must be... It's a storytelling template for resistance. Okay, well, this is in the, because of the... It's all because of Trump that this genre emerged. I'll put a link to the Vox article. Hope Punk, the latest storytelling trend, is all about weaponized optimism. It's a. It's the opposite of grimdark. So there was a grimdark genre thing that was going on. I don't know about that. This Vox article says, It's as much a mood and a spirit as a definable literary movement. Keep fighting no matter what. Choosing hope as an ex- existential act that affirms your humanity and a form of resistance against cynical worldviews. Well, I'm kind of more cynical, so maybe it would be good for me to try it, but if it's really 
sentimental. I'm not gonna do well. Anyway, none of which dissuades me from uh, investigating this novella by Primi Mohammed. Uh, let's find out a little bit about the author. She is an Indo-Caribbean scientist and speculative fiction author based in Edmonton. Fascinating. I don't do speculative fiction as a general rule, but every few years I always want to kind of, you know, stir things up and try stuff that I say that I that I think I don't like. Her debut novel came out in March 2020. But the headline in September of 2020 from the Literary Hub pronounces that Primi Mohammed is not a new writer. I'll look into that at another time. Uh, next is a novel that came out in September by Megan Gale Coles. And I have her novel from a couple of years ago, which was kind of a Me Too novel from Canada. Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club. What a fabulous title. 2019. I have it. Haven't gotten to it. And so uh, I think I need to read what I've got before I tr buy another book by these writers, don't you think? I remember years ago, Simon Savage always chastising himself for getting a whole shelf full of books by a writer he hadn't read yet. So I will try the other one. But this one... Oh, this is a, a poetry collection. So no, not interested. Some of you might be. There, I don't have to worry about that one. Here is a novel by a deaf author, and Asphyxia is the author's name. It's a coming-of-age novel about a deaf teenager. That sounds interesting. It was published last year in Australia. It's YA, and I'm still interested. I tend to just completely ignore YA. Asphyxia is an artist, writer, public speaker, avid art journal creator, and author of some other junior fiction in Australia. She is. Okay, we got a pronoun here. She's a deaf activist. She's been deaf since she was three years old and uh, it lives in Australia. Fascinating. Okay, well that I want to check out and I also want to make sure that Lynn Buckle knows about it. I will just note it quickly. In September from Coach House Books, another essay, book-length essay, The Breaks, an essay by Julieta Singh, described as a Profound Meditation on Race, Inheritance, and Queer Mothering at the End of the World, written in the form of a letter to her six-year-old daughter. Celebrates queer family making, communal living, and brown girlhood. Oh, that sounds interesting. So who is Julieta Singh? She is an academic. According to her website, she has authored three books. Oh, one of them I have heard of, No Archive Will Restore You, 2018. I think I've heard of that one. And then another one that looks very academic. Um, and this forthcoming work is described as epistolary nonfiction. She's a professor in Richmond, at the University of Richmond. I'm sorry, I don't exactly know where that is. Richmond, uh, is it Virginia? <laughs> Pretty bad. Interesting. Helen Humphreys has a new work of nonfiction. I have been unhappy with so many of her novels, except for the one that I absolutely love, that I no longer kind of go to her novels. I... I don't think she's a novelist for me. With the exception of The Lost Garden, which is one of the, my favorite novels of all time, I have tried two others, really disliked them very intensely, but her Apple book, The Ghost Orchard, I loved. And so I think that I'm more likely to get along with her nonfiction, and this is nonfiction. So this is Field Study, Meditations on a Year at the Herbarium. Came out in September. Lindy has already read it. I think she loved it. Gorgeously written in an illustrated book about the forgotten world of herbariums and the people who amass them. So that resonates with what she did about apples and apple artists. That was really... If you told me I was going to be fall so deeply into a book about artists who drew pictures of apples in the 19th, early 20th century, I would have thought you were smoking something, but I, in fact I loved it. So this is similar. About herbs. Oh, this one really grabs me. This is called Flower Diary, in which Mary Heister Reed paints, travels, marries, and opens a door by Molly Peacock. A biography I've never heard of Mary Heister Reed, but she was a trailblazing artist who refused to choose between marriage and a career born into a patrician family in the middle of the 19th century. She married an artist, returned with him to his home country of Canada, and then it's about... Um, her life in Canada, and they went all over the world. Mary Heister Reed is considered the foremother of Georgia O'Keeffe, and so on. So, interesting. I love the title, especially. <laughs> so, I have 
told you about maybe 55 or 60 percent of the, of the ones these are the ones that jumped out at me do have a look at them yourselves you will probably find other gems in there uh, yeah my tbr just keeps getting longer and longer it's the happiest of problems thanks for watching